Vincent and myself, we have been participating in Saraka. Now, what is Saraka? Now, Saraka is an African Thanksgiving feast. It's a celebration. It was handed down to us by our ancestors. So it's in my family, generation, hand down to generation to generation. Saraka is the dough thing, you know. He sends me for a barn, you know. And it's because I take up the tradition. And I just tell my children, when I they I when I die, let them continue with that, with it. How they doing it? Let them continue. Where Saraka came from, why we participate in Saraka, why are we so involved, why we love it, because we understand it. Saraka, as I said, an old African tradition passed down. Now, long ago, our foreparents' main source of income was through agricultural practices. So they would farm and they would harvest. Now, harvest, long ago, as we know, was bountiful. And they used to plant a lot of our traditional crops, corn and peas. Okay, now when they harvest these products, what they did, they would sell some to earn some income to maintain the family. They would trade with others. So if I planted a crop and you planted one, you give me some in yours, I, you know? All right, so we battered. And then they would give the church. Now the church played an integral role in the community long ago, but both spiritually and socially. So they gave some of the harvest to the church. What the church did, the day before Saraka, the church would have what we call a harvest. In that harvest, they would sell what the farmers would have given them. The monies earned from that, it would use to maintain the church for the year. Now what did not sell in the harvest, the next day, that is the, the day after the harvest, the next day, that is Saraka day. What they would do, they would gather in one person's yard. All right, they would gather in one person, and our shell would go wrong, indicating whose yard it was going to be. And they would gather in that one person yard, they would cook, they would share, they would eat that food. You also need to understand and realize that Saraka, the foods that I that we cook, that we cook, the significance Saraka, pie, baked chicken, no. All right, we use cornmeal, rice, flour, provision. These are things that we get from the land. So we get our cuckoo, we get our rice and peas, we get our white rice, we get our ground provision, planting, dashing, um, we get our callaloo or pumpkin, things that we get from the land. Over the years, people have, you know, gradually started to cook different dishes because you know people have different tastes these days we are dealing with another generation so the fish broth and so start coming in we have the lamby cooking and you know these things that come but traditionally it would have been rice and peas white rice yard fall pork because you know we might have a pig what you're in for the year and that person would come and um, kill that pig and give you that pork he will cook and so when you hear salaka and you watch people in your yard and you have to spread the leaf, blog of leaf, from the toile and uh, pack the leaf and they put in the food. Heap, little heap, little heap, little heap on the food. And then, big one, little one, old one, young one had to sit down on that leaf and eat. Everybody at home who want food. Go down on the leaf. They don't feed nobody in plate. They just feed them on the leaf. But when you watch on the leaf, you put hungry, you could do hungry. You had to eat. Because when you watch they about uh, meat and food, all kind of food you know, they on that leaf. It has outgrown a yard, feeding in a yard. So we use the plain fill. Men carry the tray. So a man would carry the tray, a woman can <laughs> carry the tray. So when you carry the tray, the leaves are spread by the pasture and the food is placed there and people would lie down and eat by the pasture. And shortly after that, we're going to have what we call a tilingo. That is the game around the playing field. Woi woi tilingo and mushe lave tilingo. I don't know what that means, I can't tell you. that happened 
the, as night falls, they would go into what we call a nation dance. We need to be mindful that a nation dance is not a uniform group going on stage and dance and you come and you fold your hand and you sit down and you watch. No. Nation dance involves drum beating in the person yard and as you feel the vibration, you feel the vibes of the drum, you start dancing. The nation dance we used to use, a, you have to have a cutlass, a fork, and a hoe. All of them had significance. The cutlass for clearing the land, the fork plowing the land, the hoe for planting. All right? That indicated that now harvest is over. We have given thanksgiving by cooking and eating. We had a feast, and now we are going back to the land. Now, as you know, planting season usually started any time after Easter. You notice Saraka is always the Friday after Easter. So that is really the story behind Saraka. And Saraka as it unfolds and young generation understand it. We start participating in it. We love it because and it's very community oriented as you would see. Okay? So even though my home practices Saraka, I would have neighbors coming and cook with me and so. The young generation, yeah a lot what keep it up serious though, but yeah a lot what thing when this is Saraka long long ago nobody in the village house don't make it sell time everybody you pass in the that past there when you see leaf people see cars to watch people eat on leaf no people don't make it sell like that them you know all the old people die out and them train and them travel and thing so those young generation just have to what take it up Young people are involved. I'm seeing the sense of that, especially in my family. Young people have been involved, and then you have other young persons cooking and so. But what I fear for is losing the tradition of it. For example, me, I love Saraka. That is one of my favorite times of the year. And I pledge to always participate, always continue. Grandma is going down, mommy is there, I will follow. So I see that because it's an integral part of our history, it's an integral part of our community, it's an integral part of our culture. Now, I must tell you, in 2007, Dr. Merle Collins did a research and she was studying Saraka. And she would have studied Karaku Maroon Festival, River Sally Saraka, and compare it to an activity that they have similar in Ghana. All right, and when we look at the documentary that she produced, it is so much similar. So I know for sure we have roots in Ghana because the activity is so similar. All right, the feast of Thanksgiving, um, after a planting season, you give God thanks and praise. So that's really and truly Saraka. And if you look at history, we have other communities saying that they have a Saraka, but I wanted to go on record that River Sally has a Saraka simply because a Saraka must take place after it happens. Hey!